if you want to truly complete Unicorn Overlord, you'll want to stop before completing the story and unlock two extremely useful additions to your army, the Dreadnought Job and the Holy Unicorn Blade. Both are unlocked through similar methods, so we are going to throw them together and explain how to get both in one huge guide. The Dreadnought Job class can only be unlocked by completing the Colosseum. Meanwhile, the Unicorn Blade can only be unlocked by earning S rank renown. Both of these challenges require high level units, so you'll need to wait until right before the end of the game before taking them both on. And even then, we had some problems. To make these challenges a lot easier, we'll explain how to get better gear and level up faster. He has everything you need to know about some of the best unlocks in Unicorn Overload. The Dreadnought is an optional job class as one of the most powerful in the game. This melee fighter has high armour and uses both a great sword and great shield. She's a totally unique hero that deals high unblockable damage and can give herself true strike. Unlike other armoured classes, she's extremely good at taking care of rogues, swordmasters, wyverns and griffins. She also has no problems bringing down armoured opponents just like her. She's very flexible and joins your party with a full set of gear that gives her maximum actions per battle. She's an extremely handy ally and you'll be able to unlock her later in the game. While it is technically possible to unlock her much earlier in the game, this task is much easier if you've collected the sacral weapons and accessories. We'll explain more later, for now here's the basic steps you'll need to complete to unlock the Dreadnought. After completing Cornea, you'll be given the option to invade Elfheim or Drakenhold. Progress into Drakenhold and liberate the city of Bormrat. Bormrat is where you'll find the Colosseum minigame. The Colosseum has two types of battles, offline and online. Select offline battles and progress up the ranks. You will need to reach rank 1 to fight Amalia the Dreadnought as she's at the top of the rankings. Not only that, you will need to defeat her twice. The first battle is at level 40 and is relatively straightforward. If you're level 36 or higher, you will steamroll her team and then progress easily. The second phase is much trickier though. Defeat both phases of Amalia the Dreadnought to permanently unlock her in your team. The real challenge is defeating her second form. If you're a casual player, this can be extremely difficult. I recommend using Elaine and a specific team to fight her. Here's a few recommendations. To defeat Amalia the Dreadnought's powerful second form, create a team of 5 heroes. You can upgrade units to have 5 characters once you reach A level renown. I used Elaine the High Lord as the leader. I highly recommend using a druid class to debuff Amalia while other jobs deal high damage. You don't need to defeat Amalia, you just need to outlast her. Support jobs like the Elven Archer are also useful here. Equip items to give yourself more actions. You will need at least 3 actions but I recommend the full 4 for some characters. Amalia often begins to fight by draining your team and removing actions from their pool. Amalia will also apply annoying status effects and incapacitate the front row of your party. To prevent this, I recommend collecting all 6 sacral weapons and accessories. Sacral gear is found in the 6 sanctuaries on the map. After progressing the game enough, go to our Via Harbour and use the boat to reach Palevia. Our Via Harbour is one of the first harbour locations that you will liberate in Cornea. On the island, you'll be able to upgrade your Ring of the Unicorn and give an NPC the Ring of the Maiden. By doing this, you will also unlock sanctuaries. Visiting the 6 sanctuaries will award you with the sacral weapons and accessories and that's very important because this gear grants the equipped character immunity to all status effects. Each visit will give you a different weapon or accessory but all of them have the status effect immunity trait. 
Immunity makes Amalia's second phase much, much easier, but even with that bonus, you may still struggle to complete this task before the final battle. If you want to guarantee a victory with almost any party, leveling up is required. To level up your party quickly, complete the Battle of Somme to the south of the capital in Cornia. This is a level 38 battle, so you'll only be able to fight once you're about level 35. Approach the guard to unlock the battle, then complete it to unlock the final Sigil's Trial. Use the Stone Circle to unlock the Sigil's Trial Zenith. This is a level 38 battle that you can repeat as many times as you want. Level up a lane by fighting the high level enemies, but completing it quickly is most important. Defeating the final enemy in this trial unlocks 5 Supreme Military Treaties items. These grant 10,000 XP to any of your troops. At about level 40, that grants you a free level up and makes leveling up low level soldiers much easier. The goal is to skip most of the enemies and just take out the leader to earn those supreme military treaties as fast as possible. To earn more XP with your units in battle, use Elaine's Royal Orders. This order costs 2 CP and doubles XP earned by a selected unit for one battle. Capture command posts to earn lots of CP, then spend it on your favourite unit to level them up fast. Don't forget, you can also skip battle animations to blaze through the mission. This can be repeated over and over again. You can also stick around and fight enemies for extra XP, or you can blaze through just to collect those items. Grab the Supreme Military Treaties items and level up the team you want to take on Amalia. Then grind to about level 42. If you have a good healer and a well balanced team along with a druid, you should be able to beat her. Remember, you don't need to actually defeat her, you just need to do more damage to her than she does to you. The best weapon for Elaine, your main character, is the High Unicorn Blade. The Royal Sword has 28 physical attack, debuff immunity and gives plus 1 active skills and passive skills. That makes this easily one of the best weapons in the entire game, but unlocking it can be tricky. To unlock the High Unicorn Blade, you must reach level S Renown, earn 5000 total renown by completing quests, liberating towns and rebuilding facilities. Make sure to complete deliveries in each of the towns you liberate to restore them and earn more renown. If you keep doing as many activities as you can, you will earn enough renown in the continent of Pistorius or in Albion. After earning S rank renown, go to the large ruins to the south of the capital of Cornia. The royal mausoleum is to the east of Facon Town. Once your renown is high enough, you'll encounter Elaine's ancestor, Gerard. You will need to defeat this opponent to earn the sword. Gerard is a high lord. Unlike the battle against Amalia the Dreadnought, you must defeat him completely to win the battle. If you don't defeat his units by the end of the battle, you will lose even if you win the exchange. Like Amalia, you will need to be at least level 40 and use a unit with 5 characters. Do not use cavalry. 
Gerard has a special attack designed specifically for damaging cavalry. Ground units like the Dark Marquis, Valkyria and High Priestess are very effective against Gerard. To make the battle easier, use the grinding methods we described earlier to reach level 42 or higher. If you're a high enough level, this battle is beatable with almost any balanced party. Like Amalia, you'll also want to use sacral weapons, although they aren't required as you won't be targeted by debuffs anywhere near as often here. Defeat Gerard to earn the High Unicorn Blade and the High Unicorn Signet. The Signet also provides debuff immunity on top of Physical and Magical Defense 3. That's another extremely useful item for late game challenges or to make any unit effective against druids. These are by far some of the best items in the game. Unlocking the High Unicorn Blade and the Dreadnought class are two activities you'll want to finish before the final mission and they're well worth completing. If you're near the end of the game and still can't complete these challenges, the right gear and a little bit of farming will finish everything up.